Hello, I'm Captain Pat May, FedEx MEC Negotiating Chair. I'm pleased to announce that your MEC has endorsed the tentative agreement by majority vote. The negotiating team and the MEC leadership strongly believe that this tentative agreement is a historic win for the FedEx pilots and provides you with long overdue improvements to your pension benefit, your compensation, and your quality of life that you've earned. This video will provide you with a high-level summary of the tentative agreement, focusing on the negotiated improvements to our CBA. Additional information is available on the website at fdxta.com. The information you'll find on the website include the source document, which is the full language section-by-section -section changes, a comprehensive TA highlights document, FAQs, podcasts, and videos. We will also provide a recorded roadshow presentation video after we have completed the first two meetings in Memphis. The MEC opener from May 4, 2021 stated, Our goal is to establish an industry-leading contract that meets our members' focus priorities of enhanced retirement benefits and pay rates with targeted quality of life improvements. The TA released today for your consideration achieves that goal. We have achieved an industry-leading contract that is valued at $3.8 billion. The increased value negotiated on behalf of the FedEx pilots through this TA makes this the single largest contract ever bargained at our property and surpasses the inflation-adjusted total of all three of our ALPA contracts combined. As an additional comparison to previous contracts, our first ALPA agreement in 2006 added a total value of $843 million, which equated to a 24% increase over the current book. In 2011, the interim deal, we achieved an increased value of $95 million, which was an additional 5%. In 2015, our negotiating team increased the value of the contract by almost $1.7 billion. That equated to a 25% increase over the current book. And again, as stated previously, the 2023 agreement, we have negotiated $3.8 billion in total value. This percentage increase equates to 37.3% value added to the current contract. Valued over four years, our tentative agreement is worth approximately $609,000 per pilot. The recent American Airlines agreement in principle is worth approximately $526,000 per pilot and the new Delta agreement is worth approximately $480,000 per pilot. The foundation of this agreement is our retirement improvements. Section 28 was our cornerstone. This issue was supported by our pilots dating back to 2016 and has been identified as the single most significant item for bargaining on every pilot survey we conducted. It's worth noting that we attempted similar improvements in our bargaining in 2006 and 2015, which were not successful. Keep in mind, every dollar in retirement money is compensation. It's simply tax-deferred compensation. Let's start with duration. FedEx preferred and proposed another six-year deal. We originally proposed a four-year deal and ended up agreeing to a four-and-a-half-year contract with an opener beginning 150 days prior to the amendable date of the February 2028 bid month. Therefore, we'll be able to open negotiations September 2, 2027. Let's move on to the highlights of what was achieved in Section 28. First and foremost, the pension has been improved for every FedEx pilot on property. We have negotiated a permanent adjustment to the pension formula that has been unchanged since the 1999 CBA. In addition to the pension increase, we bargained for a new modern pension option that will offer every FedEx pilot an alternative pension which has been structured to remove many of the legacy pension limitations. The new pension, the market-based cash balance plan, is structured to provide pilots with a valuable alternative to the legacy pension that will grow with your increasing compensation for your entire career. Let's take a closer look at the improvements in the legacy pension. The current pension final average earnings or FAE limit will increase from $260,000 to $325,000 at the date of signing, which will be July 31, 2023. 
The final average earnings limit will increase again on January 1, 2025 to $330,000, and on January 1, 2027, a final increase to $338,000. The improvement provides a pilot a maximum pension of $169,000 for a pilot who has obtained 25 years of service and 338,000 final average earnings. This equates to a 30% improvement to the current pension of $130,000. The pension improvement on its own has a cash value of $578,000 per pilot for those who remain in the legacy plan until January 1, 2027. What is extremely important to recognize is that the deferred compensation dollars are in a tax qualified plan and represent higher value money as compared with current annual income. If you're a pilot on property now, but will be retiring prior to the date of signing, which is July 31st, you are eligible for these improvements. Pilots may elect to leave the legacy pension and participate in the new market-based cash balance plan. Please be aware that you're not under any pressure to make this election now. Following the ratification phase of this agreement, there will be a long process which is outlined in the market-based cash balance plan letter of agreement. For now, you only need to understand what the two pension options are offered to you in order for you to make an informed decision about ratification. Let me explain some more details of the market-based cash balance plan. FedEx will provide an 11% annual company contribution up to the IRS compensation limit, which will grow with inflation. This year, the IRS comp limit is $330,000. If the plan were in place now, that would provide for a company contribution of $36,300. The targeted market-based rate of return on contributions is 6.5%. Unlike the current legacy plan, there are no years of service limit. Every year you have counts. The primary method for benefit distribution is lump sum benefit option at retirement. Your years of service accrual in the legacy pension plan ends upon entry into the market-based cash balance plan, which is likely to occur on January 1, 2025. Notably, the pilots who elect to transition into the market-based cash balance plan will also have their high five final average earning increase from the current $260,000 to $290,000. The final average earnings will be applied to your frozen years of service in the legacy pension plan, likely beginning again in January 1, 2025. It should be noted that active pilots accrue an additional year of service in the legacy pension in November of each year. I want to share with you some hypothetical examples using average compensation of the retirement modeler. This is very similar to what you'll be provided during our TA education. I need to again emphasize this is only provided for your information for the TA ratification process and not intended to be a replacement for the election period which will occur later next year. During that phase of implementation, FedEx will provide modeling through their actuarial accounting firm. We used average compensation for pilots in each demographic for the example. In all the charts, we'll show you in green the current pension, the increase to the applicable final average earnings, and the market-based cash balance accrual. We have added in the past service accrual in the pension as well as the defined contribution from FedEx. So as you look at these examples, the past service and the DC balance will be static. In other words, not changed from the current plan to the legacy or the market-based cash balance plan. Therefore, you should concentrate on the green portion of the chart. We did not include any of your own contributions but the model will have that option accessible for your use. Pilots will also have the option to enter any retirement age from 55 to 65. All the examples we're providing will use age 65 retirement for this video. Our model offers the ability to annuitize the lump sum money from the defined contributions and the market-based cash balance plan. We have provided both annuitized values and cash value equivalents for your use. As a reminder, the legacy pension is paid as an annuity and the market-based cash balance plan is normally paid as a lump sum, but the plan will also offer an annuity as a default form of benefit. Example 1 is a pilot hired at age 35 and is currently 50. The example shows the current legacy pension in the left column. 
The middle column is the improved legacy pension. Alternatively, in the right column, if the pilot elects the market-based cash balance plan, they will have a frozen benefit of $78,000 plus the future increase of a $290,000 cap, which is added to the market-based cash balance plan, shown as $88,702 in this example. That totals $328,879 in an annuitized annual benefit, including the DC plan. You can see that in this hypothetical example, the pilot is slightly better off in the improved legacy plan or the middle column, which shows a benefit of $169,000. Combined with the DC plan, this equates to a total annuitized annual value of $331,177. Example 2 is a pilot hired at age 39 and is currently 43. The example shows the current legacy pension in the left column. The middle column is the improved legacy pension. Alternatively, in the right column, if the pilot elects the market-based cash balance plan, they will have a frozen benefit of $17,600 plus the future increase of a $290,000 cap, which is added to the market-based cash balance plan, shown as $145,328 in this example. That totals $300,000 in an annuitized benefit, including the DC plan. You can see that in this hypothetical example, the pilot is slightly better off in the improved legacy plan or the middle column, which shows an annual pension of $169,000. Combined with the DC plan, this equates to a total annuitized annual value of $306,000 in retirement. Again, this is only company provided money and does not include your own elective deferrals. Example three is a pilot hired at age 39 and is currently 39, or in other words, a pilot who gets hired at or after the date of signing. This pilot will be in the market-based cash balance plan. The market-based cash balance plan shows an annuitized benefit of $212,852. The normal form of benefit will be a lump sum. In this example, this equates to $2,822,000 in the market-based cash balance plan for a total value of just over $5,132,000 when combined with the DC plan. Both the market-based cash balance plan and the DC plan assume a conservative investment rate of return of 6.5%. Example four is a pilot hired at age 32 and is currently 35 years old. This example shows the current legacy pension in the left column. The middle column is the improved legacy pension. Alternatively, in the right column, if the pilot elects the market-based cash balance plan, they will have a frozen benefit of $12,000 plus the combined annuity increase of $298,772 in the market-based cash balance plan. This pilot is better off in the transition to the market-based cash balance plan. The cash value of the combined DC and market-based cash balance plan benefit is just over $7.6 million, or an annual annuitized value of $578,235. There are other significant items that were negotiated as improvements to Section 28, such as the increase to the sick leave buyback, increasing from $110,000 to $150,000, and waiving the one-year early notice requirement. The combined improvements in Section 28 account for $1.67 billion of the four-and-a-half-year deal. In other words, it represents 44% of the total value of the $3.8 billion TA. While retirement was the cornerstone issue for us, the MEC identified pay and quality of life issues as an overall goal for improvements. Our Section 3 compensation was negotiated to both accelerate our pay rate increase and accelerate the time spent to get to the top of our pay scales, currently at 15 years. Here are the pay rates negotiated over the duration of the deal. Hourly rate increases effective on the first day of the August bid period, or July 31st, 14%. Six months later, in February 2024, 3% increase. Then, February 25, 4% increase. February 2026, 3% increase. And February 2027, a final pay increase of 3%. This equates to 27% or approximately 30%
compounded pay raises over three and a half years, five pay raises over the same period of time. This also equates to a compounded raise of 22% over 18 months. The acceleration to achieve the top of scale pay rates moves our contract more in line with the industry standard, which is a 12 year pay scale. Our nearest competitor has a 15 year pay scale. What you will see is our date of signing pay rate will combine our top rate at 15 years to include the 14th year as well. At date of signing plus six months or February, 2024, the 15th year rate will compress again and include the 13th year. At date of signing plus 18 months or February of 2025, the 15th year rate will compress again to include the 12th year. This will accelerate all pilots pay to the top of scale who are hired at or after 2009. In other words, any pilot who has yet to achieve their 15th year of service. This historic pay rate change provides valuable increases to the negotiated pay rates. This item was added very late in negotiations to deal with the concerns over the recent system bid and the concerns of delayed career progression. It is a specifically targeted benefit for the nearly 3,100 pilots who have been hired here since 2015. Let me show you how this affects the pay rates for pilots in that demographic. I'll use a pilot who was hired in February and has eight years of service. The graph will show you the impact of each seat and the pilot's progression over the course of this agreement. First example is a wide body captain at eight years with a date of hire of February 2015. This pilot has a current pay rate of $314.23 per hour. By the end of this agreement, the pilot will have an overall increase pay of 38.3% or a pay rate of $434.71. Moving to the wide body first officer, their current rate of pay is $210.94 and by February 2027, the pay rate will be $308.17, which is an increase of 46.1% over their current rate. A narrow body captain who has a pay rate of $269.26 will have a rate of pay of $374.72 by February of 2027 which is a 39.2% increase to their pay rate. The last example is a narrow body first officer. Today, they have a pay rate of $181.45, and by February of 2027, will have a pay rate of $271.13, or a 49.4% increase over the current rates. We have also negotiated a significant change to our new hire pilots. We have moved away from a flat salary number and has set up a durable compensation paradigm that will adjust with our increasing pay rates. Now, new hire pilots will be paid 2.25 credit hours per day, which equates to 63 credit hours in a four-week bid month and 78.75 credit hours in a five-week bid month. For example, a new hire narrow body first officer at the end of this agreement will have a pay rate of $105.09 multiplied by 63 credit hours for a four-week bid month will be compensated $6,620.67 for that month. And on a five-week bid month, the new hire pilot will be compensated $8,275.84. There is a recent trend of making great strides in collective bargaining agreements in our industry. This tentative agreement continues that trend and raises the bar. The recent Delta Agreement was one outstanding example and created a total value of $23 billion for its 15,000 pilots, which is $1.5 million per pilot over the four-year deal. Once ratified, our agreement creates a contract with a total value of $12.5 billion for FedEx pilots, which equates to $2.2 million per pilot over the next four years, a 44% premium over Delta. We are proud this TA builds upon the success of our fellow ALPA pilots. There are other target quality of life improvements which have been highlighted in the comprehensive TA highlights document which you can find online. I'd like to close by saying that the credit for this TA goes to you, the pilot group, both collectively and individually. When we asked for your help, you delivered. You showed up for the pickets, you showed up for the strike vote, you fought for and earned this agreement. In the end, Due to your efforts, we were able to drive the company off of their UPS proposed rates and close out an industry-leading contract for you and your family. On behalf of the entire negotiating committee, thank you for your support. 
We look forward to presenting you a comprehensive briefing at the upcoming roadshows and to engage in conversations with you and your family.